Hey everybody, this is a new video series on the EFP performance module, which I'm sure will help a lot of pilots, especially the ones uh, who are beginning their flying career now. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about the takeoff uh, performance module, which is one of the most commonly used modules uh, in day to day flying. So as you can see here, we have a lot of parameters which we can uh, modify and we shall explore them one by one. The first one is the most obvious, which is the departure uh, airport, which you can change to wherever you're departing from. I've chosen Delhi. Uh, runway can be selected, let's say 29 right. And you have various intersections here. So whenever you choose full length, so it will show up here with the full length of the runway available 4170 meters. And if I modify it to an intersection, let's say Papa Phi, it gives me a takeoff shift of 647 meters and uh, a length of 3523 meters more interestingly in the uh, runway uh, selection we have two options here modify runway and modify all engine data let's explore them when you press modify runway you have uh, various options such as runway length reduction runway width add one obstacle or modify entry angle so according to no time you can change the runway length width or uh, modify any obstacle that got added temporarily due to building constructions or some crane installation so that will all be catered for by changing modify entry angle modify entry angle is normally defaulted to a 90 degree angle uh, if you modify the entry angle it will affect your uh, tora toda asda because your lineup uh, will eat up that distance so generally generally it's default to uh, defaulted to a 90 degree angle okay then you have modify all engine data here which is an important uh, aspect we have few things that we can change here for example we can change thrust reduction acceleration depending on your airline you can modify this as per the company policy or you may modify it due to various reasons such as uh, weather around the airfield you know wind shear conditions or there is some noise abatement procedure in that particular airport so this thrust reduction acceleration can be modified then you have climb speed limit which also can be changed defaulted to 250 knots up to 10,000 feet which can be updated as per your convenience and decision you have final climb speed normally at 300 knots and that can also be updated from 250 to 350 knots because the last speed till 10,000 was 250 knots then the most important thing here in this change that we can make is all engine gradient so you have a gradient value to target altitude I'll show you an example for Delhi so Delhi, you can see here, it's a SID here, which is uh, for runway 29 right. And you can see it says at the bottom of the chart, these SIDs require a minimum climb gradient of 7% up to 1700 feet. Okay, so I will update that here. 7% required up to 1700 feet. When I press done, it gets added to the calculation. I can add multiple engine gradients. Some airports have multiple gradient requirement. Let's say just for example, Delhi has another, let's say another requirement of 5% up to 3000 feet, let's say. Okay, so then I press done, that also gets added. Okay, so when you press that, once you press done, as you can see, it shows modified, meaning you have made some modifications to the runway, either the day engine data or the runway itself. Fine. So once that is done, let's put winds. Uh, winds can be updated, let's say 300 at 10 knots wind uh, speed can be entered in knots or meters per second gusting up to 20 knots so whenever you press done you get uh, the wind in crosswind component and headwind component split wind can also be entered using relative so practically whenever we have winds reported as variable three knots we really don't know the direction so we generally tend to choose tailwind three knots uh, trying to calculate more conservative in nature so that is tailwind three knots. So you can see here it's updated to tailwind three knots. OAT, let's say 30 degrees in Delhi. OAT can be entered in Fahrenheit and Celsius, depending on the local units that are being used in the METAR or the ATIS. QNH also can be entered in hectopascals and mercury. Let's say 1006, done. Uh, runway conditions. You can update as per your reported runway conditions, either the dry, wet, slippery, wet, compacted snow. It's part of the GRF uh, calculation, which we shall probably discuss more in the upcoming uh, video during landing. So let's choose dry. Anti-ice off or engine only or engine and wing. So you can choose one of them. 
depending on the weather conditions let's say off take off weight of let's say 70.8 okay you can enter it in decimals or you can enter the full thing also 7800 also whenever you press the star it goes to the default of max structural takeoff weight okay let's say 71.500 is my takeoff weight today also if you enter something abrupt likely if you enter 84 it will it will not accept okay it will accept but it will show some alert takeoff weight is greater than structural do you want to keep this so if you keep it it does accept but it will obviously not be correct okay so you default it and let's say 70.800 fine and then you have takeoff cg which you can select as per your load and trim flex either you have an option to toga takeoff or you can select a flex temperature generally we would prefer a max flex takeoff because the maximum flex will give you a reduced thrust which will be beneficial for the engines maintenance will also be reduced we i'll discuss about this once we finish calculation then you have config depending on the airline it's defaulted to one plus f two or three or optimum as per choice you can select it optimum will give you the best configuration okay and uh, air conditioning so you select uh, this off whenever engines are not supplying the packs okay or you've switched off the packs itself suppose apu is supplying the packs then you will use off okay only when engine is supplying the packs you select on so let us say packs of takeoff. So once you're done with all of this data and uh, you also have MEL here, which suppose let's say, um, you know, it's reported that reverses are not working. So you can add this into your MEL. So it will cater for your V1 speed, rejection speed. Okay. Uh, so let's just remove it. Now CDL also is there configuration deviation uh, list, which you can add here. Different, uh, you know, suppose let's say some flight control, some flap track fairing is missing. So the dispatch has reported that to you. So you can add that one is missing. And then when it gets added, it will get added in your calculation. Okay. So you can delete it for now. So now once you compute this, you'll get various options which you can see here. And you can see the configuration thrust V1, VR, V2. Limitation is takeoff weight and you have uh, reverser competition all reverses inoperative so by default the dry runway calculation is always inoperative reverses if i made it wet see here if i made it wet and computed again so now that will change it will say all reverses operating so for wet runway it considers reverses for dry runway it does not consider and now you have uh, the takeoff ship when you press the runway you get various detail about the runway elevation slope tora tora asda Entry angle, like I told you, defaulted to 90 degrees, width of the runway. Obstacles are catered for seven, seven obstacles. So if you want to view the obstacles, you can press this. You get a list of various obstacles where they are located with respect to the runway. Okay. So this is not going to cause any problem as such. Takeoff shift of 647 meters and all engine gradients. If you remember, I had put 7% and 5% just to show you guys. So that is about the first page. The second page has a copy of the MCDU performance takeoff page, which gives you green dot and everything that you can cross check and review your calculations. Then you have another page which talks about the climb segments. So the requirement in Delhi was 7% up to 1700, which I'm meeting because it's showing that I'm getting 12.9%. If I press the graph here, it is giving me the expected performance of the aircraft in blue line which is above the minimum required. And then on the last page is a very important uh, number here, which is max altitude. It signifies the max engine out acceleration altitude. That means if my engine fails, I really need to level off at 2700, even though my engine is not secured. We generally disregard the last two digits 70 feet because that's not really practically possible to level off at 2770. So we round it off to a lower 2700. So that's the last altitude that you need to level off, even though your engine is not secured yet. Now, coming back to the last point, which I wanted to discuss here was the stop margin, which is 680 meters here in this case, with an accelerate stop distance of 3073 meters. So accelerate stop distance is 
if you reject at v1 you are expected to stop there okay and you still have a margin of 680 meters so sometimes what happens is uh, this margin comes out to be quite less let us take uh, just uh, i've increased the takeoff weight and uh, let us see how much is given 603 okay let me just uh, modify further situations let us say tailwind of 15 knots okay and let me see if the margin is reduced okay now i have a margin of 226 meters so normally uh, the flex value we don't modify it is max only but sometimes um, if you modify the flex flex was coming out to be 53 in this case if you modify the flex value okay if you reduce the flex your thrust will increase correct so if you modify flex to 50 your stop margin will change your stop margin is increased okay 308 meters even though you're legally correct but you may modify the flex to get a more stop margin but it is not really advised to do so but just wanted to show you what is the impact of changing flex on the stop margin of course the speeds will also change okay so yeah that's about this uh, takeoff uh, performance module if you guys have any further doubts you can comment below and i shall get back to you and uh, do subscribe to the channel and share this video and uh, also wait for the next videos which are going to come on other modules as well take care cheers and happy landings bye bye